Welcome back to the shop, everyone. Um, in episode four, we finished up doing some uh, general layout on the tongue and then uh, also ran out of CO2. So I went and picked up another bottle today, so we're uh, good to get back going. Um, I also, off camera, I took a lot closer measurements and got the tongue uh, dialed in exactly where it belongs. And I scribed a couple lines so it'll be easy to put it back in place because when I cut the miters on the main tongue pieces, I have to unclamp everything, get those cut, and then uh, I want to be able to put it back in exactly in the right spot. So I'm going to show you on uh, over here how I go about um, figuring out the angle I'm going to cut. So I've got one of these. You can pick these up on Amazon. I think they're like $15. There's these, just a small protractor. It's a, got a couple stainless steel rules on it, um, but uh, very handy for figuring out or measuring angles versus trying to do it with the protractor. Um, you can zero it at any position. So I'm just gonna take that in here and lay that in here. so that I can measure the angle of the tongue to the main frame. Should be, based on the CAD drawing, it was somewhere right around 25 degrees. And you don't get much closer than that, 25.1. So what we then do with that measurement is that's the total angle. So when I cut out the pie piece here to allow this leg to fold over, I need to be half of that. So 12 and a half um, degrees is what I want. So I can just fold the protractor around until I have the 12 and a half degrees. So that gives me the uh, the pie piece there that I need to cut out that will be the equivalent amount needed for when I swing this piece around, when I swing this piece around to line up with the main frame. So I'm going to mark that out on the other side. I've got to unclamp these, flip them over, make the same pie marks on the underside. I'll get those pie pieces cut out and then before I bring them, or before I heat them up and bend them, I'll bring you guys back for that next step. Got those uh, <clears throat> pie pieces cut out as you can see here and I'm cut out and I got a V'd on each side so once they're closed up that'll leave a place for some weld to build up. So I'm going to set you up here and uh, get the torch out. One other way you could do this, cut these, I mean you could cut them completely off if need be but um, if you didn't want to cut then you got to try to hold Get everything back up square again. I'll set you up here. So one other way you could do this if you didn't have a torch, um, you probably could clamp it down tight enough that you could force it around and bend it cold. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it hot with a torch. The other way you could do it is you could um, slit part way through with a skinny wheel or a cutoff wheel leaving a little bit of material, making that hinge, and then run a weld bead on there. It's just nice not to have a weld bead showing there. So, I'm gonna grab the torch. Oh, 
hopefully that doesn't make too much noise in the background. So I'm just going to get it printed hot there on the, the line and then just push on this end. I've got it clamped so that the other end um, doesn't move. over to the other side and um, maybe get a little bit closer view and get the other side done also. And we can see that gap closed up almost perfect. There's about a, maybe a 30 second of an inch there which would be perfect to get good welding penetration. Just about the max um, for the cutting tip. I almost needed to put a rosebud on. But again, you can see there that the, um, the gap closed up nicely, just about the right amount to get some good penetration when I weld it. And you kind of get a better view now of how that tongue um, lays on the side and gives you some extra reinforcing on that whole front half of the trailer. So I didn't clamp the coupler back on there because I had I had scribed lines where it, um, where it belonged and then clamped it so it's the same as if the, the coupler was on there. So before I weld those um, joints that we just bent, I will clamp the coupler on just to make sure everything is perfectly flat. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to reinforce this. Even though the welds would be sufficient, I'm confident in the welds, I'm going to do some reinforcement here on the inside. Show you what I'm going to do. I've got to cut the pieces yet. So I'm going to take this flat bar. I'll cut in cut 45s on the bottom, and that'll lay in here on this inside edge and tie all uh, four of the flanges together. So that'll make that real. It's kind of like fish plating it on the outside. But I'm going to do it on the inside. And then we'll see, I might to make it look a little nicer, well, it's hard to say, I may take and cap the end of these. Uh, maybe, maybe not, same thing, I might cap this, probably won't. Um, there is room, there's going to be a triangular shaped tongue box that goes in here for storing chains and those things. So I guess that's actually about the next pieces I need to cut, are those, these plates that go in here, again, because these are a 45, they'll lay in there at a 45, which makes the the top and bottom cuts 45 so I think I'll cut those 45s first and then I can just lay them up there and then scribe the, the line on the bottom part so I'm going to do that over at the cold saw I'll bring you back for that because you haven't seen me make any cuts with the cold saw but it'll take me it's currently set up on 90 so I'm going to switch it over to 45. It'll take me a second, and then I'll bring you right back. This saw, it's amazing how fast it will cut um, pieces, like for instance those cross members. It cuts those darn near as quickly as you would if they were lumber. But if you have a really large, broad piece of material, um, 
just because the service area, it's a fairly slow cut. This is only 3 16 if this was quarter or definitely 3 8 I would tip it up on edge. Um, and that way uh, you can cut it, cut it much faster. Um, so we'll see how it goes through this four inch. This blade's getting a little dull, so we'll see what happens here. That's the, really the only thing I don't like about this saw, and you probably can't pick it up in the camera, is it throws chips everywhere. So yes, yeah, it's, it's the side effect of having it. Overall travel is as I was trying to get as much depth of cut on a 45 as possible. So this is four inch flat, and it just barely uh, makes it through it. So on a, on a straight, it, it'll cut. I think it's six or seven, inches. but on a 45, you lose a little bit of um, distance. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here and just hold it up to the tongue. I won't swing you around and mark where it needs to be cut to length. I think that's the last 45s I'll need to cut for a bit. The clamp sometimes gets the little chips underneath it and Make the turn a little hard until we clean our way out of from under there. I'll kind of give you a few, if you can see it, of exactly how that, um, how I used the trailer hub. So that trailer hub goes through the bottom and then I don't know if you can see in the, the, the gap there. Not really, maybe from the end. You can maybe see how there's just a regular hub and a spindle in there and then this whole assembly is attached to that welded to that spindle. So. You get a very stable platform. Okay, I've got you set back up a little bit closer to the tongue before you can see down in here. So now you'll be able to see that these fish are just sitting here just like that. And they'll get well done. So I'm going to get those uh, tacked in. So I'm going to tack things in place. Um, you don't need to see that again. I'll go around and tack quite a few things so I can get rid of all the clamps for you. And then you'll get a better, better idea of what it looks like. Tongue is tack welded on and it's complete. Um, 
configuration and form. Maybe a little bit of far off view. You can see a little bit better. Um, you can see how that came together. It's got the rise needed to get to an 18 inch ball height. Um, if someone was curious, so I'll give you a little bit of a close up there on that bead. Okay, so I kind of regroup here, and I think at this point I'm about ready to just start welding all of the joints that need to be welded. With the trap hung on there, it really can't move anymore in a trapezoidal type fashion. So um, I'm ready to lock everything down, and then we'll work on uh, setting the axles up in place. So stay tuned. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shop. And as you can see in the background uh, from the last episode, pretty much all the cross members are in place other than those ones on the very end, which I talked about. Um, you can actually even see, um, see right here that the um, right here that I got a couple of springs set up there just to give kind of some idea of how that tongue, uh, where that tongue lands in regard to, I'll move a little closer in here, where the tongue lands in regard um, to those springs. So you get really good, uh, the front half of the tra trailer is basically really well supported. Um, and that's a little bit of a teaser having those springs up there, but I actually hope by the end of this episode we'll have the, I'll have the axles and springs set up on both sides and tacked into place. Um, I'm just going to tack them right now. I have a really good idea where I'm going to put them based on a on a weight balance I did and I think I'll actually take you back into the office and show you how I go about determining where I where I want to put the axles. Um, you can certainly do it um, in real world application by putting them really close to where you think they should be, tacking them, flip the trailer over and with basically all of the weight, lumber, stake pockets, anything you might have on there, as much of the, the finished weight as you can have. Um, you could then just simply put a scale under the ball coupler and that would tell you how much tongue you, weight you would have and then you could, uh, you could move the axles appropriately. But it's kind of nice to have a, a, at least a good starting point and I'll show you how, how I do that um, with a little bit of math. So given everything is tacked in place, actually I think I got a fair amount of welding done on the tongue. Um, we'll make that out. So I'm going to um, just start welding all the cross members in solid. So there won't be a lot of dialogue because it's kind of just a lot of individual welds. I'm going to let it run and then I'll decide how much of the video to edit out so you guys aren't bored completely to death. And then I'm going to, I'll be ready for the axles. And then I'm hoping to flip the trailer over to do the, the welding on the other side. Um, and was kind of hoping for some nice weather for that. It's, it's March here and I live in the Northwest and Mother Nature has, even though it's March, She's decided that uh, she's not done with winter, so actually, you know, I'll probably insert a little bit of a clip here of what it looks like outside the shop. So hopefully when I am ready to flip it over, the uh, weather will be at least a little bit nicer. I don't mind if there's snow out there, but hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer. Not that it's the end of the world if I have to do it in the cold. Um, and then I will get, get that flipped over. I guess enough of me jabbering at you. I'm going to get the welder turned on and get some of these cross members welded.
right, so that gets all of the uh, cross members welded both vertical and both tops of the the uh, flange. So um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do the axles next because that's about where um, I'm hoping they can have those packed in place. So I'll bring you back as soon as I'm ready to start that part. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, we're not in the shop, we're in my office. So I wanted to touch a little bit on how I'm going to go about determining where the axles will be placed on the trailer. I mentioned that on the shop floor that that's what we're going to do. So I'll share my screens here with you and show you basically the calculations it takes to do it as well as how I applied it specifically to my trailer. So it's fairly simple math. Um, as I mentioned out in the shop, you don't have to do it this method. You could certainly set the axles where it looks about right. Just tack them in place, get the trailer down on the, on the ground, kind of measure your tongue weight, and then adjust the axle position from there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of math to it to get myself at least in the ballpark of where I want it to be. So uh, stand by here and I'm going to uh, share my computer screen and show you what, what we're talking about. Okay, as you can see, I've got a spreadsheet up here, and I'm just going to use it as kind of the interface to show you the basics behind how you go about calculating a pivot point or a center of gravity um, that you could apply to a trailer. So in this first uh, picture here, graphic, it's simply, as you can tell, basically it's a, a seesaw or teeter-totter. And it's depicting that if that whole teeter-totter assembly weighs 30 pounds, um, then the, the, you could simply, the balance point would obviously be in the middle because it's perfectly balanced. This, uh, the situation is what, just like would be on a trailer, is as you change the weights on the deck, so envision this seesaw board as the deck of the trailer, as you add different things, in this case might be the ramps down at this end, um, the weight of the boards, the positioning of the cross members, all those different variables change um, what that not only the total weight would be, but it also changes the balance point. So um, this is an example of, you could think of these as kids on this seesaw. One kid weighs 40 pounds, the other weighs 60 pounds. And then the seesaw itself weighs 30 pounds. So clearly um, this person weighs more, the seesaw is going to go down on that end. So to deal with that or to make this a perfectly balanced plane, you would need to move the center point. Um, in this case, the, the center point of the Seesaw can be considered the axles. Yes, there's two axles, but those connect to a center trunnion. So you can still, the, the, the center point between the two tires and wheels would be the center point or the balance point. So um, the key to calculating the, the tipping point or the center of gravity is that you need to know, you need to look at each individual component just like it would be here with uh, if these were kids. So once you know those individual components, this shows just happens to show three. There's, I think, a total of 52 different items that I calculated the weights for on my trailer. So if you look at the individual uh, items on the trailer deck, or in this case, the seesaw, you simply add those up. Um, but before you add them up, you need to also be able to take a measurement of where they're at on the in the in the plane. And so you need a reference point. And in this case, the seesaw, they used one end. In the case of the trailer, I'll use the, the ball where it actually connect the coupler connects to the ball. And then I'll measure from that. So this, um, as you can see in this depiction, this 40 pound person is exactly one feet from the end. The seesaw itself that weighs a total of 30 pounds, it's in, it's in the middle, 8 feet. And then the last kid is a, who weighs 60 pounds is 15 feet from that pivot point. And that's, uh, you'll see in here in a minute why that's critical, because um, you then have to do the calculations to determine what the moment is. The moment is what basically influences what the, what the balance would be. So in the case of here, there was the 30 pound seesaw at 8 feet. 30 pound seesaw at 8 feet, you multiply them together, that gives you 240 pound feet of, of force or influence that the, that um, seesaw itself has. Uh, the, the kid weighs 40 pounds, he's at 1 foot, so that's 40 foot pounds. The last kid, the 60 pounds, 
is clear out at 15 feet and that makes 900 foot pounds. So in, in vision, to, to, it'll help explain or help you understand why it makes a difference um, that you have to deal with each component separately is let's say this last kid was 30 pounds also that's still going to be a significant difference because the first kid is at 8 feet 240 pounds so if this was 30 that would be what 300 uh, that would be 450 foot pounds so even though the weight may be the same because of the position on the trailer or, or on this case the seesaw it has a much larger influence so once you calculate all of the moments for each item on whatever you're trying to calculate the center of gravity for um, you just simply total those up that gives you a total number of foot pounds or moment um, then you also total up what the total weight of your items are and you divide uh, the total weight the the moment by the total weight and that gives you a measurement in this case feet because we were dealing with pound feet you can do this in inches also which is what I did so that gives you 9.08 so that says for this go back up here so for this situation with these kids you would need to move the center of gravity or the pivot point of that seesaw to 9.08 feet and that would make them perfectly balanced so in essence the trailer is what we're doing the same thing with the trailer we're calculating when the trailer is fully built what would be the perfect balance point and then we compensate for how much tongue weight we want so I'm gonna drag actually I'm gonna switch to different spreadsheet here so this is uh, the spreadsheet for my actual trailer um, in some cases you can you can kind of lump things together so this top portion it, it looks a little busy here but this top portion just this is the ramps itself so I calculated the ramps when they're all fabricated as their own complete unit and um, their weight and worked out to be 159 pounds give or take and then when I measure from the distance from the center of the ball back to the center and that's the item or that's the key is when you're adding weights you have to add the distance from your reference point to the center of that mass so it's 272 inches from the center of the ball to the center of the ramps when they're stowed and that calculates or that comes out to be this many inch pounds again I, I since I'm working in inches it calculates in inch pounds versus foot pounds um, the other items for instance here's a, here's all the cross members every one of the cross members because it's at a different location in the trailer you have to calculate it separately and it's fairly fairly simple uh, calculations this is what the cross member weighs per pound that channel weighs per pound there happens to be um, and you can see here the unit I, it's unit slash feet so I'm, I'm doing the calculations in per foot so there happens to be 6.62 feet per cross member so 6.62 times 3.5 is 23.717 pounds that first cross member is 43.3 inches from the center of the ball calculating a uh, 1003 inch pound moment so I'm not going to go through every one of these because the math is exactly the same on all of them so I calculated the the moment for every one of the cross members um, basically every component on the trailer including the main frame rails everything has to be has to be calculated except for the axles um, and those are here and, and, and I have so I know the weight of the axles but I do not include those in the calculations because the axles themselves because that is the pivot point the, they could weigh a thousand pounds they could weigh 500 pounds it doesn't influence the, the the balancing of the trailer and the tongue weight so those are excluded um, then here is the rest of the items the coupler the jack the tongue box I'm going to put on it the battery I'll put in the tongue box uh, the winch is in here somewhere so basically every item that is going to go on this trailer is in here and it's calculated out to how many inch pounds that is so just like in the in this tab over here that I showed where all of those were added up for a total I did the same thing all of the total weights are added up in kind of subcategories and then they're totaled grand total so grand total for the whole trailer weight which this does include the axle and fenders and everything should be around 2300 pounds this is the weight of all the components minus the trailer and the fenders because those don't influence the center of gravity 
Then I also added up all of the, the inch-pound moments. You divide the inch-pound moments by the weight of the total items, and then that gives you, and this is in inches instead of feet again, because I did it in inch-pounds. So 176 inches from the center of the ball is what would make this trailer um, perfectly balanced. It's actually not quite this measurement. I'll tell you why in a second. That would make it perfectly balanced. Well, as anybody that pulls a trailer knows, you want some weight on the tongue weight. The rule of thumb is 10 to 15 percent. So I want, with the trailer empty, since it's going to weigh this amount, I want about 200 pounds on the ball. So there's this line item here, and this is where I'm not 100 percent positive on if this is the correct way to calculate it, but I'm going to give it a shot and, and it's going to get me really, really close. So I, do, I was trying to figure out how do I compensate and make the trailer be, in essence, out of balance by 200 pounds on the ball. And I could have thrown a, a fake weight in here somewhere, but I think the best way to do it, and whether this is accurate or not, I don't know, or the correct way, I don't know, is I just added a negative 200 pound entry at one inch. So basically I'm telling it that there's 200 pounds less than what the trailer in reality weighs and therefore it moves the center of gravity to try to make it balanced again but because this is not really a number this is taking a number away I think that is the, the correct made way to do it and so this 176 inches includes this so 176 inches should give me 200 pounds on the tongue um, we'll see how it goes so that's the plan um, if I drag the SCAD drawing over that gives you the depiction of the trailer. So 176 inches, give or take a few tenths, puts the axles to scale as shown here in the drawing. So um, they'll be a little bit farther back, which is good than the halfway point, because this would be an area if you needed to load something from the side with the forklift, the axles don't get in the way. You could tuck things in here. Uh, so I guess that is kind of a, the quick and dirty on how I went about calculating where to put the axles based on wanting a 200 pounds on the ball when the trailer's empty. And then obviously as you load whatever you load on here, you can influence how much weight's on the ball by how far you, you load that item forward or aft. I will touch on... Um, there were some discussions I had with individuals about why I went with a 5,200-pound axle. So the, the pickup that I'll primarily pull this with, unless I'm going to pull something light, then I'll use my half-ton uh, daily driver. But if I'm going to pull things heavier, I've got a second-gen Cummins Dodge that I'll pull this with. So they come factor with a Class 4 receiver hitch, which a Class 4 receiver hitch is rated for 1,200 pounds tongue weight and 12,000 pounds tow, total towing weight. So realistically, it doesn't make sense to build a trailer that's a 15 or a 16,000 pound that's going to be a bumper pole unless you want to do it illegally and um, you run the risk of getting caught, then there could be some fines. So this trailer, with its capacity and the fact that you can put a load on here that would put upwards of or as much as 1,200 pounds on the ball, um, that basically fits well within what the towing capacity of Class 4 receiver hitch is. So that's one of the reasons why um, I didn't overbuild the trailer. So hopefully this gives you kind of a, a, an example and how you go about calculating, frankly, the center of gravity or center of balance on anything. It doesn't have to be a trailer. It could be anything that you just need to take into account. Every component is its own, its own item and then do the basic math and that will give you your, your balance point. So for now, uh, I think we'll sign off on this part, and I'll meet you back out in the shop, and we'll pick up with actually getting the axles installed.